Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today I am further tinkering on my 1.6 VW, specifically on the electronic side of things. Last night I wrote up, I think, three different series of codes to test in the Arduino. The first is just a one that the Amazon Q came up with that should respond better, it has like a PID control. The second one, should show density and some thermocouple information in addition to just cleaning up the code in a more basic way. And the third one will enable this RPM sensor to read into the Arduino board, maybe. So we're gonna try those out in addition to this RPM sensor right here. So I already have it wired up in a test capacity. As you can see, this is actually the screen for it. And this is the sensor, and the magnet for the sensor right now is on my camshaft, and the camshaft spins at half the speed of the crankshaft. So, so I get to have an RPM gauge for the very first time in this car's entire existence. It's exciting. So, uh, to start, I'm just gonna run the car, and I'm gonna show y'all how this works. This is a RPM sensor that uses a magnet that passes by it. So the magnet is currently on the camshaft and I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it up to show you what RPM we're running. And then I'm probably gonna actually go mount this down on the crankshaft, which is where I actually wanna take RPM signal from. Though you could do either. You could mount it up here and then you just need to multiply by two to get back to full crankshaft speed instead of camshaft speed. Without further ado, uh, let's fire this thing up, mount some sensors, try some code. la ti -ta. So for starters, I'm just gonna show you what we're running for RPM right now. So yeah, again, half the speed. So we're actually around 1,030. So as you can see, this sensor actually needs to get pretty close, like two to three millimeters away from the magnet that's spinning around. And, you know, that takes a little bit of a little bit of trial and error so this bracket i think i might just tack it on tack weld it on screw it on something it on to the kind of bottom of the fender there uh and then get it like right next to the crankshaft my only worry with the crankshaft is this is just a magnet this is what it's picking up that goes by the front of it and right now the crankshaft doesn't have a lip on it so I'm worried at a certain speed, the magnet will go flying. So I need to just make sure I glue it on there. It's okay. We got a welder and shit. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and tack it on here and I'll show you what I got afterwards. This is yet another one of those things where just having a welder for it makes it a million billion times easier to mount because I can do it kind of janky. So this is what it looks like with a little bit of welding magic. Just like that. Brackets tacked onto the fender. My tire's over there. And the whole point is you wanna get really close to the surface so when that magnet goes by it, it'll be very close. Gotta tighten this up still. But that'll definitely pick up on that magnet no problem. And that's on the crank so we'll get the right signal. Alrighty, so now the sensor is wired up down below. I got the wire run up to about here, and this is a sensor you could get. It was on Amazon for 15 bucks. And what's important is just to run the wire out of the way, because it's right next to all this belts and such things. So yet again, I have us wired up, and blue is ground. 
black is ground, orange, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the wire colors between this thing and this thing don't really make a whole lot of sense. But before I do anything else, I'm just gonna recheck that we still get a signal because it'd be silly to go further without this step working. Okay, I just double checked all the wires and the sensor has a light on it, so we'll just try starting again. And I move the sensor closer to the magnet. Hopefully this works now. Okay, well, this is about how I remember the last time I tried to do this going. Why the fork won't it read? Okay, we got it. So it's a little more fiddling. There we go, this is our RPM. Which is actually so cool. I, I, I don't even know what speed this is normally, but it's 1,030 is what I like to idle at. I idle. So sensor works, and right now I'm just extending the leads on it a bit. I highly recommend you use these things. They are heat shrink butt connectors, and when you get the right crimper and a good strip, and then you actually put the shrink on like I am doing now, they work so well. And you don't get crappy connections or pulled apart wires when you don't want them. The key to the shrink is you definitely need something with medium heat. This happens to be a butane powered soldering iron, which I would also recommend kind of life changing. So once I get this all wired up and shrunk and all the things, then I will run these wires inside the car. And for now, I actually do have code that will pull signal off of one of the pins. So maybe I can do that. It shouldn't be too hard to set that up. But I was thinking for the first iteration of this, it's still cool just to have a tachometer of any kind. Cause like I said, I've never had one on this vehicle. So just having even that little digital readout right in the middle of the dashboard is gonna be sweet. So I have kind of two thoughts for what I'm doing right now, or two intentions. First, obviously, is just to know what RPM the engine is turning, which is gonna be a huge deal, even if it doesn't sound like it, because imagine never knowing what your sports car is doing RPM-wise ever, you just guess. That's what uh, my experience with this has been. That's not gonna work. We'll do it from the other side. And second, well, second and third, there's three reasons. So first is just tack. That's cool. Uh, second reason is that with the size turbo, which is too big for this engine, which is kind of lamentable, honestly. There we go. Uh, you know, I'm sure if I just put the right size turbo on, I wouldn't have to project this as hard, but what fun is that? And the third reason, well, I never got to the second reason. So the second reason is that I can actually provide boost control based on RPM. And that's cool because like in fifth gear and in certain gears, 
I get surge right now, which means the engine isn't consuming enough of the air that the turbo is providing it uh, because the turbo is too big, but I can control it using the vanes and an RPM signal because you know below a certain RPM, I'll limit my boost to say like 15 or 12 or 10. I think 10 is kind of what works well usually at reducing surge at low RPMs. And then at a certain RPM, you can take that limit off of it and say, sure, okay, boost to 30 now, that's fine. So that's the second reason. And the third reason is that I think it'd be really cool if since the Arduino is already on here uh, to eventually have a rev limiter because this car also doesn't have one of those because it's mechanical. And you could add it by having the Arduino control the fuel pin, I think, that's my theory, is that if you connect the Arduino, you feed it the RPM and you tell it, okay, at 4,000 RPM, I want you to turn the pump off until we return to 3,800 RPM, then what you'll get is the fuel pin being toggled on and off a bunch of times in rapid succession which would, especially, ugh, which would essentially act as a rev limiter, which I think would be really cool. So the next step of this process is to try the tunes I wrote, but it's like 5.30, 6 o'clock right now, and we got snow coming in, and I'm trying to ski tomorrow, so... Whew. Oh, well, the snow is freaking dank the other day. We got like 20 inches, and I got to ski it. So I'm glad I put it down and waited because taking a test drive at night sucks anyways. Car is running and warmed up. Uh, the RPM sensor is installed. I tried my three iterations of the code. The PID control doesn't work at all at idle. Like it literally opens the veins all the way instead of closes them. So not even worth trying that one. The RPM read into the Arduino also doesn't work. So that's gonna need further tweaking. <laughs> And then the third one, which is just like trying to get the density, air density to display. I'm really not sure that one's working either. But I did just increase the drive and boost limits to 35 and I have them set at 30 right now. And there's an RPM sensor that displays on my dashboard. So there's still lots to see. Uh, I'll be curious if the code that shows the density works the same because it actually cleaned up how the code is coded as well. So if it works the same, then I'll go forward using this code because it's cleaner than the stuff we originally made. And then the other really interesting thing to see is actually how this car performs at different RPMs. So this is a 1984 Rabbit, so that's 40 years old and today is the first day it's going to be driven with a tachometer ever. So it means a lot for me tuning it because I'll finally see what we're doing at RPMs. And even before driving it, just thinking about it, I feel like the reason probably that my top end is feeling flat is the fact that like the top end of my driving range is probably like practically valve float and this turbo is way too big so just putting the tachometer in may actually shape quite a few future decisions because i'll understand what the like what speed the engine's at instead of kind of guessing and feeling off we go okie dokie so right now at idle we're running 1000 170 so we're at 1100 rpm idle right now which is where i set it for kind of like a high winter idle kind of situation anyways and we're trying different types of control we'll turn the fuel pump on hopefully this doesn't rub hang like a mother all right and that's kind of an interesting part of how i set this up actually so it just made a buzzing sound and that's actually the fact that the magnet touched the sensor because you have to get it really close for it to work and i put my sensor on the frame and not on the motor so ideally you'd set it up so your sensor is spaced off the motor and then 
it moves with the motor because the motor twists when you accelerate and it kind of slides around a teeny bit side to side when you corner. Uh, so for now I may have to work out some kinks there. And then eventually, like maybe on the TDI, I'll mount the sensor so that it's actually so that's actually like attached to the block itself, or maybe I should just figure out how to use the crank position sensor to take an RPM signal, one or the other. Fucking better be recording. So at 3,400 RPM right now, second gear, which means my shift points this whole time have been kind of off. We upped it to 35 PSI overall. And our density calculation isn't working whatsoever, so that's what it is. <laughs> oh, it's fast. It's super fast at 35. Yeah, so the easy fix for the top end feeling flat is just to increase the boost, which we got to play with now. We just did 35 and it felt fast and nothing blew up. And this turbo is big enough, it could probably easily supply more. Like, I bet you we could do 40, 50 PSI before we blow something up permanently. Uh, which is the goal, I should say. I mean, we're gonna test this system until she blows. That's that's the whole point. And uh, I'm trying to think what else here. I don't know. That was a great test drive. The code's still working. The density doesn't work at all. Nor does the temperature. So I'm gonna have to massage that a little more. Figure out why we're not getting a thermocouple reading whatsoever. But I mean, shit, our freaking temps are good. Oil pressure's good, everything's good. Thing feels fast as fuck with 35 instead of 25. That's awesome. And yeah, so my usual driving RPMs on this are definitely high for this engine. So I have it idle at 1,000, which is high. I have it, I usually cruise at like 2,500 to 3,000. And then when I'm actually doing a pull, I think one of my pulls was, I've gone higher too, actually. 
than this <laughs> than I did today. But I think today I pulled up to about 5,300 and I've done higher, which means that when I've been on it and I'm like, oh, it feels like it doesn't have any get up and go, that's because I'm at literally like almost 6,000 RPM. Uh, so there you go, it's possible, you can do it. You just, you just don't make a whole lot of power up there because because it's fucking a mechanical injection pump. It only can do so much compensating. So that would explain that. So if you want to make big power up top, you just have to increase your boost to keep it feeling sporty. Let's get one more in here. And so that right there, actually, what I'm pretty sure happens, because it's not tire spin, there's no squeal, uh, is that my clutch is slipping. So like in second gear, when the engine makes a lot of power, I'm actually starting to spin clutch, uh, which obviously is, is not really what you want. But that's because this is the stock clutch. So it just goes to show that you don't actually need to spend any money on your clutch until you get to a really tapped level of build like a stock clutch is good up until you're running 35 psi basically that's a tangent but at any rate when i go to do my tdi build we're definitely using a high horsepower clutch in that one and i'm going to be using a slightly different gearbox i'm going to try to find a later o2o that has the well we'll need one with the bigger splined input shaft and then also hopefully some slightly longer gears because the gears in this one are really short and also second gear servo or synchro is totally blown up anyways so thanks for coming along we got an rpm sensor installed and you kind of saw how i did it so if you wanted an rpm sensor yours which honestly i would recommend it's interesting to see uh i would recommend you go ahead and install one because it's a great tuning device and then kind of my one other takeaway from today and in general, which, you know, I'm not sure it's what I want to do yet, but I do have a VNT 15 kicking around, like the stock TDI VNT turbo. And let's turn this off so I can hear myself think. Uh, so I do have one stock VNT turbo uh, off a of TDI, the VNT15, and as you can see, I'm like not really making boosts until like 3,000 RPM. So this is a pretty tapped turbo setup for this vehicle. I mean, my boost comes on at three, and I pull it to like 5,500 usually, which is totally out of range for this motor. So it potentially could make more sense to slap the VNT15 on there, which is going to be like kind of too small. Um, but then. I mean, boost would be like literally instantaneous off the line, I would assume. And then it just wouldn't rev as nicely to the moon. Things to play with, I'm gonna noodle on it. Uh, this RPM sensor was awesome. I'm gonna keep fine tuning my Arduino. And then I really gotta work on getting the TDI back together later this week. Hey, Hoozle, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate ya. Just hit the like button if you thought this was vaguely amusing. <laughs> Happy Turkey Day out there.